Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action <coughs> you, you want to stand up for yeah, me, thanks? Thank you. Just relative to God's gifts, when yeah. you were talking this morning and a couple of times I've thought there are so many metaphors in nature about God's gifts, like the butterfly and morphogenic fields, and, yeah. yes. and I don't even know anything about science, but... Yes. Yeah. And every single metaphor demonstrates something in a higher version of the universe. Mm. Yeah. See, God, God has not left us without um, indica indicative directions. He, he's basically already showing us through the study of the physical what the spiritual may be like. Does that make sense? Yeah. And in the study of the spiritual, he's showing you what the soul stuff will be like. Yeah, so so this is a very loving thing to do if you think about it. So it's, it's like providing all these clues in the environment that allow you to discover the truth. So you know, for me, a lot of the clues in the first century were just like fascinating. Very first time I ate an almond in the first century, have a fond, as Mary knows, affection for almonds, <laughs> because they they help me feel about the soulmate issue. Because hmm. I'd be there breaking the almond in two, shelling it first, you know, taking the shell off, and then putting them in some hot water and what you call nowadays blanching them, and then and then taking the shell, uh, splitting it in, in half, and you put it back together and they fit together, and then I'd go to another one, and split it in half and try to join the two other halves, you know, that didn't match together and couldn't join them together. It's just really interesting. Why did God create a seed in two halves? Isn't that strange? There are some seeds that are not like that, right? But there are a lot of seeds that God created in two halves. And yet it makes no real sense as to why they're in two halves. Does it? Like you, you think of the average seed, you know, like a wheat seed or something like that, or even the smaller seeds, the more round seeds and so forth. You can't sort of split them apart to see whether there's two halves or not. Uh, but they don't appear to have two halves, you know, when you look at them, and that's all I had to do was to look at them. So, so then I get these other seeds, and they're them in half, and they're two halves, and, and they fit together and fit apart. It's weird, this. Like, I thought it was weird. Yeah. I did. And I was only little, you know, like by this day. I think I was about three or four, you know, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why did God do that? Yeah. Well, it never occurred to me until you heard the higher law and you went, oh. Sorry there. Well, it never, I, I never really wondered about it until I heard the higher law and I went, hey, yeah. that's like that other law. Yeah. And then it's really beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's like, and I find so many things like that. And in fact, there's a wonderful statement in the Robert James Lee's books that actually says that the lower laws, understanding of the lower laws lead you to the higher laws, in mm -hmm. fact. So it's a it's a beautiful thing God's done to enable us to understand, isn't it? Isn't it great that God's engaged even in the design of things, a learning process in the process of understanding, and and the more we discover scientifically, the better it is for us actually, because you, you examine even the way that the sperm and egg cells combine, and then what they create. They create a completely different creature than the two halves individually, don't they? There's a commingling of the DNA in that process. And once the commingling of DNA occurs, there's now a whole heap of laws that engage that wouldn't have engaged unless the commingling occurs. Right? Isn't that interesting? This tells me, you know, if I was a scientist, this would tell me that maybe you put some things together and now a whole series of other laws get generated. And that is actually the truth when it comes to receiving God's love. You, you know, if you inject God's love into a situation, then a whole heap of other things get created that weren't potentials mm. before. Mm. But, you know, there's a whole heap of things. And you, you brought up of the obvious one of the butterfly, you know, the grub mm. turning into the butterfly and so forth. And, and nowadays they've only recently discovered, haven't they, that, that the grub actually completely dissolves. And isn't that a wonderful analogy to what's going to happen to you? <laughs> you, I didn't mean it to be that funny, but anyway, <laughs> you are going to be completely dissolved because what you think you are at this point 
God is trying to destroy and all of God's laws are trying to destroy. And I mean destroy all of the things that you created through sin. What you think you are, God's trying to destroy. So it's like dissolving the grub. And, and, and in fact, you can't become the butterfly unless the grub's dissolved. Right? Which actually has, if you think about it, a lot of metaphor in, in our presentation this week, hasn't it? So even that's very interesting. And I used to sit down, in, I've, I've described to you in the past how I went to a butterfly house in one place and we used to just, and I went there with Mary again. I just said, oh, I've got to take you there too. And we both had the same feeling, you know, like just sitting there watching the whole thing, the whole process, and the feeling that overcomes you, just like, yeah, this is what's happening to me. I've got to let, I've got to let the old grub like go. That is a psychologically disturbing concept. I wonder how the grub feels about it. <laughs> it's like, I've got to psych myself up to let myself go. Oh, what does he feel? You know, like, uh, I'm not going to do it yet. <laughs> I'll hold on a bit more. You know, I don't, I don't know what he feels, but, you know, a grub has two brains, by the way, so, you know, like it's like one in the middle of his back, I think, and one in his head. But, um, but, the, but you know, obviously he doesn't have that kind of cognizance. But, but you imagine you, you're there, you're like, you'd be freaked out, and that's how you feel. You're freaked out about losing what you believe yourself to be in order to become what God knows you can be. And many of you are not willing to engage that psychologically disturbing process. Right, and there's, there's your terror. There's your terror again. Refuse it will be your real self because it's a psychologically confronting process to become your real self through the process. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure.